today's video, I'm gonna be talking about drying 3D printer filaments and printing with filaments while keeping them dry. So in the past, I have simply used these little dry pods on my 3D printers with a desiccant inside of them to keep my filament in a relatively dry environment while it prints to keep it from absorbing moisture. However, this spring after I released the Orca, I had to start printing parts in nylon for the Orca kits and that resulted in me having to print with a lot of nylon you know, on a 24 seven, seven days a week basis. And that brought up a lot of issues with my system. Previous to that, I was able to dry the nylon prior to using it use it and then just put it back on storage and I dry it again when I needed to use it. And my print, most of my prints were short enough where there wasn't enough time for the nylon to absorb enough, a lot of moisture during the print. So it wasn't a big deal. However, when you're printing all the time off the same roll, you can't dry it like I was doing so separately and then put it back in the printer. I needed to be always running the printer. So that produced a big issue where the nylon would slowly accumulate moisture even inside the dry pod with desiccant. And uh, that creates lots of problems. So more recently, a lot of people have been doing content on um, keeping your filaments dry and why it's so important. Uh, I've left some links down below to the 3D Print General who did a great video on it uh, more recently as well. Uh, so I think that's really, really good that people are talking about it because it is a super important subject and wet filaments is probably the number one culprit of bad 3D prints. A lot of the 3D prints I see uh, who have a lot of bad stringing, little pockets, bad surface finish, it's actually due to moisture in the filament. So it's a, a huge culprit and something that you should definitely be thinking about even if you're printing with PLA+. Plus. It's not as big of an issue um, as with more technical materials, but it can still be a problem if you live in a humid area. So if you're printing with uh, TPUs, if you're printing with nylons, or if you're printing with anything PET based, uh, or even uh, ABS, which is a little bit less, but still definitely affected by moisture, um, you definitely need to be thinking about uh, keeping your filaments dry. Now there are several different aspects to keeping your filaments dry. One of them is drying the filament, which means taking wet filament or even filament directly from the manufacturer in its bag. Uh, quite a few manufacturers, the filament comes uh, wet. It doesn't actually be super crispy and dry. And that's for uh, several factors we didn't need to go into, but most filament needs to actually be dried before you start printing it. And this is, you know, more technical filaments like nylon. So, and then the other aspect of keeping your filaments, of uh, drying filaments is keeping them dry while you are 3D printing. For short 3D prints with less moisture sensitive materials. You can just keep it in the open air and enough time will not pass for the filament to absorb enough moisture to cause a problem uh, while you're actually running your printer. However, if you're like me and you're running the printers on a uh, around the clock basis, it becomes a big, big issue. And that is what we're gonna be talking about in today's video is uh, both of those aspects, drying filament, the different things that I do and also keeping it dry. So keep in mind that this video is gonna be more of me just sharing the issues that I've had because I'm still having some issues and things that I'm working out. This is not a subject which I have put enough time into uh, to understand it fully. Uh, it's something I need to be working on more because it is uh, important, especially for when I'm doing production type printing um, on around the, around the clock basis. So definitely look at other sources of information here and take this video just as a uh, starting point or just my thoughts on the subject. Now, um, around the time I started having more moisture issues because I was printing with uh, more moisture sensitive materials, uh, Fix Dry actually reached out to me and offered to send me a product for review. Now, normally I don't do product reviews just because it's not what I do here on the channel. They're normally not very popular videos. I don't think they're that useful. However, I was actually needing a filament dryer. I was looking at buying one. I was looking at the Fix Dry dryers and I said, sure, send it over because I was already looking at buying one. So I'm also going to integrate the review view of that dryer into this video and talk about that a little bit as well because I think it actually is super equitable to the subject. I have found that a certain temperature is needed to actually break the water away from the plastic molecules. So when the uh, filament absorbs uh, water into its uh, kind of polymer lattice, it's not simply just getting wet on the outside. There's not just water which you have to dry off. Those water molecules actually bond to some degree to the polymer molecules. Now this depends on the uh, material and I don't know the exact details with each material of how this process works. What I do know though is a certain amount of temperatures needed to actually break that bond and get the water out of the filament. And um, I've kind of figured this out by experience because if I was printing, uh, trying to dry nylons at around uh, 60 degrees Celsius, I was actually not able to get super good results, even with drying for like several 12 hour periods at a time. And I ended up taking my dryer and modifying it to run at 80 degrees Celsius and I get way better results. So when you're looking at drying filaments, you have to look at time. It takes a certain amount of time to dry the filament and you also need enough temperature. Just putting the filament in a super dry area is not enough to actually uh, take the, the moisture out of it, at least in my experience. 
So a dry box or something like this that has desiccant in it that keeps your filament dry can actually be enough in some cases to keep the filament dry once it's already been dried and it's on the printer. However, if you have wet filament, just putting it in a dry box like this one will not keep it dry. So it actually takes heat to dry the filament, at least in my experience. Um, so even if you had something like a molecular sieve to make an absolutely dry environment or a vacuum chamber, it isn't really enough. To, uh, to get that filament dry. So that's why it's important to distinguish between keeping a filament dry and making a filament dry, because those are two different separate things. So the way I make my filament dry is I use a modified Magic Mills food dehydrator. And originally it ran around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It was supposed to be 160, but it was really around 150 with its thermostat, uh, the actual temperature inside. And that's around like 65 degrees, 60 degrees Celsius and that just wasn't really enough to get my nylons dry. So I ended up hardwiring the heater element to always run on in a bit of an experiment, no thermostat needed, and now it runs at a steady uh, 80 degrees uh, Celsius or like 180 degrees Fahrenheit in that ballpark. Um, and now I actually get excellent results with like eight hour drying periods with nylons and PETs and any other filament that I'm printing, including TPU. Now, what I also do is I take the filament after I have run it through my dryer and it's nice and hot, I then put it in a vacuum chamber for like 12 hours um, and or even longer if I have time. And that's something that actually that Vision Miner did and they recommended um, for their drying process. And I thought I'd try it. It actually kind of, I think, helps. I get better results with shorter drying periods. The filament stays hot in the uh, filament, in the uh, vacuum chamber for some time because the vacuum is quite insulating and uh, after after actively heating up it seems to break the water molecules loose from the polymer and allows them to dry out more quickly in the vacuum that's 100% not a requirement but if you have a vacuum chamber around I do find that it actually helps speed the process up quite a bit after making sure the filament has been run in the dryer for some time and is fully up to temperature to loosen those water molecules loosen the actual uh, chemical process is probably a little bit different than that but it's a good analogy I have found that to work quite well for drying filaments, uh, including nylons, the PET carbon fiber from Bamboo Lab, as well as TPU. And TPU has been the most difficult filament to keep dry to get consistent results. It's one of those filaments where when it's wet, you will absolutely know it and it will not print uh, parts that are of any quality. So um, those three filaments are the ones that I've done the most experiments with more recently, and I've gotten excellent results using my modified dryer. Now, a big issue you'll run into is most filament dryers and most food dehydrators uh, all top out around 160 degrees Fahrenheit or around 60, 65 degrees Celsius, which is unfortunate because in my experience, that is simply not hot enough to get uh, good results when trying to dry nylons and other moisture sensitive filaments. So, Getting a food dehydrator and modifying through one at a higher temperature is a legitimate option. There are also little toaster ovens and uh, electric devices you can get that do that. And I would like to see a trend in filament dryer manufacturers increasing their te maximum temperatures um, to be uh, warmer. And we'll talk about that in just a minute when I talk about the review of the uh, fixed dry filament dryer. Now let's talk about keeping your filament dry. Now you, there's two different times you want to do this. One of them is during storage and the other one is when you're actually printing the filament. And the latter one is pretty important as well as the former. So when storing filaments, what I've always done is I have uh, desiccant containers, old desiccant containers. They're just five gallon steel uh, tins, basically like little mini 55 gallon drums and they are uh, completely sealed. They're steel and uh, very airtight. And I just have a lot of desiccant in those. I use dry right for that particular application, um, even though there are, I think, better options. I still do not have the best results with filament in those containers. So I always have to do some, at least some drying after taking the filament out of the dry box. That particular method would probably work better if I use something like a molecular sieve to keep that air super, super dry. I've not experimented with that yet. I know that some people have, um, and uh, I think that it is actually worth investigating further to ma make sure that you remove basically all the moisture in the air. Another great option I think would be keeping them in a vacuum. However, containers to store lots of filament in a vacuum can get expensive. So that's uh, another option. Storing filaments is just simply not that easy, keeping it absolutely dry. Now, storing filaments while actually printing them can be more challenging because you have to have the filament coming out of your dryer uh, container into the 3D printer. A vacuum is kind of ruled out because of that. And what I have done for the longest time is I have these uh, old cupcake uh, carriers, basically. They're a transparent pod, which is pretty airtight, and I have it attached on a nice bracket above my 3D printer. I did this a couple years ago when I put the shop in because it helped a little longer than that now, but it was a while ago, and I've been using them for several years um, because it helps keep the filament dry after I put desiccant in it, and it keeps the humidity level probably around 15 to 20%, which is actually pretty good for printing with like 
uh, PLAs and uh, polycarbonates and even short prints with nylon because it, it's a low enough humidity level that the filament doesn't absorb uh, humidity particularly quickly. However, with TPUs and nylons, after a couple days, you will begin having issues because that humidity level is simply too high. So that is where the fixed dry dryer comes in. And I've also been experimenting with some, uh, uh, thinking about doing some other uh, types of active heating to keep the filament dry. But the basic concept here is active heating. So rather than just using uh, desiccant inside the container, you're actually heating the air just like you do in a dryer. And uh, the basic concept behind a dryer, if you, if you don't know, is you're taking in air that is of a certain relative humidity. So you have a particular dew point, like you've had a dew point of like 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. You're taking that air and then you're heating it up. And the dew point doesn't change. The amount of actual water in the air also doesn't change. But what does change is the capacity of the air to hold moisture. The hotter it gets, the more water that air can hold. So the absolute amount of water in the air doesn't change, but you're heating it up and the relative humidity is going down as the capacity of the air to hold water goes up. So the water begins to absorb, uh, the air begins to absorb water out of uh, the filament and take it into, uh, into a uh, vapor state in the air. So that's kind of how filament, that's how drying works. There are a number of filament dryer options now on the market. Fix Dry is one of them, and they kind of follow a similar design as a lot of the other more recent uh, filament dryer designs. And basically it is a container that holds your filament. It has vent holes on the top. It then has a small uh, heater element in the bottom of the fan that takes air, heats it up, and blows it into the filament chamber where your filament is being held. Now in the case of the fixed dry, it does mechanically have a pretty nice setup. It holds up to a, a three kilogram roll inside or two two kilogram rolls, which I kind of like because the dryers that limit you to one kilogram are uh, pretty limiting because I do use the big rolls a lot. The most important aspect of a dryer is how hot does it get and what what is the ventilation inside like? Because if the dryer is completely closed off to the outside, the internal humidity as it dries the filament will uh, simply go up and you won't get a very effective dry because the water actually can't go anywhere. You wanna be bringing in new air, heating it up to a low relative humidity, and then expelling any of the moisture uh, out into the environment again. In the case of the fixed dry, they do a pretty good job of this. They have a vent on top and uh, the fan and heater element on the bottom, so it circulates the air around the filament quite well. So I have had no issues with condensation internally or uh, any other problems with a lack of venting with moisture. Now, temperature is where I begin to get a gripe with the fixed dry. Um, that is because they say it goes up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is actually pretty good. That's a lot higher than they used to be in, back in the beginning when more companies were starting to make filament dryers, um, but it's still not as hot as I would like it. However, when I actually measured the internal temperature, it was around 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which works out to like 65 degrees Celsius. So it's not quite as high as they say it gets, at least when I measured it um, with my thermometer. And uh, my experience drying, the fil drying filaments in it has been consistent with that. Starting off with wet nylons or wet PET carbon fiber uh, in the, in the uh, dryer for several days, I have unfortunately still had issues with moisture. Just to give you guys some relative numbers here with this filament dryer, uh, assuming you have a uh, relative humidity at like 85 degrees Fahrenheit, about 75%, which is a quite humid environment and something I experience around here quite a bit. Um, under those conditions, your dew point is probably gonna be around 75, 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Running this dryer, um, you're gonna have like 150 degrees Fahrenheit internally or like 65 degrees Celsius. That'll result of a relative humidity inside the filament dryer of about 10%. And that has been enough to keep the filament dry uh, when I've been using it. However, um, it's still pretty marginal. So if that temperature was bumped up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you know, around 80 degrees Celsius, uh, that number would, would jump almost in half down to like five or 6% relative humidity, which is actually quite good. And if you get it just a little bit hotter, um, your relative humidity really starts dropping off. So that's why I think pushing those temperatures up a little bit makes a huge difference in the effectiveness of the dryer. Um, also making sure you have dry air getting sucked into the dryer using air conditioning to do that, which is something I've also done a little bit, um, also helps keep the humidity level uh, inside significantly lower. Now, what I've been using the dryer for, and it works excellent for this, is I take already dried filaments and I put it in the dryer and I've now had a particular roll of PET carbon fiber, which uh, is a moisture sensitive filament that has lots of issues after only a couple days out in humidity. It's different than nylon, um, not quite as sensitive, but it's still, uh, the results are just as bad with a little bit more time. I have now had it in the dryer for uh, several weeks and I've had no issues at all. It's been printing on my Bamboo Lab P1P. I'm actually printing front plates and uh, for my kits and I've been getting excellent results with no stringing, no signs of moisture at all. So it's been doing a great job keeping the relative humidity low enough where I don't have an issue with the filament absorbing new moisture. However, 
it's not quite as hot as I would like it to be. I have uh, been back and forth with Fixed Ride a little bit about this and it's something that they might work on. And it's something that if I were them, I would focus very heavily on getting my temperature actually up to 80 degrees Celsius um, or you know 180 degrees Fahrenheit because that is uh, the temperature you need to effectively dry. And that would make it one of the best filament dryers on the market, I think. So that is kind of my big gripe with it. Now we'll jump into some more mechanical aspects, how it works and some different things that I would like to see done with it. Mechanically, the filament dryer uh, directs the filament to the printer using a PTFE tube, which goes into a little rubber grommet. These rubber grommets, unfortunately, don't grip onto the PTFE tube well enough, um, and the PTFE tube can slip into the filament dryer and get entangled in the spool, resulting in uh, the filament becoming tangled and uh, a failed print. So I just use a little a Bowden tube adapter on the fixed dry to add some additional uh, uh, retention, which fix this problem. But I would like to see proper uh, Bowden tube adapters installed on the dryer to begin with to help alleviate this issue. My one other gripe with the fixed dry filament dryer is that the uh, user interface is just some push buttons that you kind of go through a couple different settings and you can increase the time and the temperature. Obviously, I want to run it at the maximum temperature, really, in my opinion, even with PLA Plus, because I had never had an issue drying PLA Plus even up to 80 degrees uh, Celsius because uh, the filament can soften a tiny bit at, at this point, but as long as it's still on its spool, I've never had a problem with distortion. So I always like to run at the maximum temperature and um, I do that with the dryer, but every time that the dryer powers down, you have to go back through the uh, settings and increase the temperature and the time back up to the values you want them at. And speaking of time, the dryer defaults to like four hours. However, if you turn the time up to 48 hours, um, it'll run on unlimited uh, forever basically until power down, which is what I want in a dryer. I don't really want to power it off because I am running the dryer on a standby mode next to the printer, which is where I think these dryers really shine. So I would like to see an interface that defaults to the maximums rather than the minimums uh, when you first power it on. Now, really just a convenience thing, but it's uh, something that would make the user interface quite a bit better. The things I really like about this dryer are actually that it holds the, the up to the three kilogram rolls of filament on its little internal rollers, and uh, that works quite well. I've had no issues with filament uh, feeding other than the problem with the Bowden tube getting pulled inside. I like the fact that it goes up to almost 70 degrees Celsius. That's a lot warmer than the ones that used to run around 50 degrees Celsius. And the fact that it has a fan that properly circulates air through the dryer and expels the moisture are all really good things. So this dryer has actually worked really well as a standby dryer next to my printer. And I would actually recommend it for that purpose. I've seen them below $100 when on sale, which is still kind of expensive for what it is, but on the other hand, it's not that much money um, for uh, how important it is to keep your filament dry. However, if you want to actually dry filaments, you're going to need something at a higher temperature, at least uh, in my experience. So I would look into potentially modding one of these dryers, which I need to look into a little bit more because the duty cycle on the heater is not anywhere near 100%. So they could run it hotter with just some software changes. So if anyone from Fix Dry is watching, I would definitely recommend increasing your temperature uh, limits in software to let it get up to 80 degrees Celsius or even hotter. But 80 degrees Celsius, absolutely for sure. And that would make it a very practical machine. As it is, it makes a great standby dryer. I might get another one, I might try some other brands, but um, it's something which I'm gonna need on all of my printers to provide that act of heating to keep the filament dry. So in summary, uh, moisture is a huge problem, especially if you live in a humid area with more moisture sensitive 3D printing filaments like PET based filaments, nylon based filaments, as well as TPUs, um, and really any other filament to a lesser extent. So if you are having issues with print quality and stringing, it's probably moisture. So I would definitely recommend uh, getting a dryer as well, potentially as uh, dry boxes and areas to store it. I have been using dry boxes for a long time uh, and they work to some degree. They help mighty get the problem, but it's not enough to keep filament dry long term. Some sort of active heating or potentially using a molecular sieve or some other more advanced desiccant method could work as well. But active heating is definitely uh, a really good option. I've had excellent results out of it in the last few weeks while trying it out in a very humid environment. And uh, I would highly recommend looking into that. When you're storing filaments, keeping them as dry as possible. Once again, if you have a vacuum, uh, something sort of vacuum storage available, I think that would be awesome. But just storing them in a completely sealed container with desiccant does work uh, to some extent, but you'll probably need to do remedial drying. But uh, in any case, I would highly recommend uh, researching filament drying options, getting yourself some sort of filament dryer. The Fix Dry does work quite well as a standby filament dryer next to your printer, um, and uh, I am definitely going to be using it for that. So uh, it's an important subject. Don't overlook it. Dry filament is good. Wet filament will make your day bad when you're getting poor quality prints. So keep all that in mind, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's uh, brief video, and I will catch you in the end next time.